October 29th, 2019, show number 36. What is up, my friends, and welcome to another edition of the XFL Week in Review. I am your host, Mark Perry from XFL News Hub. And on this week's show, we have an exclusive with Corey Vereen's agent, where he talks about the pay scale of the XFL, players' reaction to the pay scale, and so much more. We're very thankful that he was on the show. So how do you get in touch with the show? Well, you email podcast at xflnewshub.com with your MP3 or your thoughts, whatever you think about you want to talk about, or you can call 888-430-7692, extension 3. Remember, cutoff time is 5 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. And remember to leave us a review on iTunes. And speaking of iTunes, we do have two reviews. First up, Renegade Fan Blake 55 said, gives us a five-star review on our podcast. Says, go Renegades. I get the best information better than Google on the XFL. Yes, you do. The only question I have is, will there be fantasy football for the XFL? Absolutely, absolutely. We'll get into that. Actually, a couple of people asked that question this week. There is fantasy football. It's going to be tricky because there's only eight teams, so there's only eight quarterbacks. So it's not like you can have a league of 12 friends because then your team wouldn't have a quarterback. So that part, I don't know about. But there will be fantasy football. Also, Read a bunch of numbers, high-quality content, engaging host, and timely news. Thank you very much. Production value is good as well. Excited for February 2020. Go Dragons. So you have a Dragons fan now, too. We appreciate these reviews because this is what helps get the word out for the show. So we really appreciate that. And you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That's the only way we get the word out. Leave us a five-star, one-star. Don't leave us a one-star. Leave us a five-star review, and we'll read it on the show. Very simple as that. So remember, I'm also on Dallas Radio, 1160 AM KBDT Sports Day with John Clemens on Sunday, Saturdays and Sundays. Taking a little hiatus, but check that back out from mid and mid-November. Uh, also, remember, we are live on the YouTubes Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern for the podcast. We're going to just do it live on the YouTubes. And then we're just going to dump into the podcast world and just because this way we can interact. And actually, years ago, I used to do this even probably before YouTube on a pro wrestling podcast. We do this and I like the interaction with all the fans and it's a lot of fun. So first, we're going to get into our interview. We're going to get a little lay down the groundwork if you haven't heard it. And then we'll get into our interview with Logan Brown, agent for Corey Ravine. So without further ado, folks, let's just get into the week that was the XFL. All right, and our first story up this week has to deal with Wildcats defensive end Corey Vereen. So just after a week he was drafted in the XFL, the former Tennessee volunteer standout Corey uh, Ravine dropped out of the XFL. This was due to his disappointment with the pay grade of the XFL, which came as a surprise as some people, but there's more to this story, and that's why we have our exclusive interview. So Vereen played for the Memphis Express of the AAF before that league folded, and he was the team leader in sacks. Logan Brown Sports, which is his agent, put out the following letter, press release, letting people know why he wasn't going to play in the XFL. So it says, on Wednesday, October 16th, 2019, Corey Vereen was selected by the Los Angeles Wildcats in the eighth round of the XFL draft. Corey was extremely excited about the opportunity the XFL presented after having immense success in the AAF and received the camp invite from the Arizona Cardinals. However... On Friday, October 11th, 2019, the XFL League office made players and agents aware of the player compensation and payroll schedule for the league. The salary schedule did not come close to the matching of what was talked about rampantly throughout the XFL combine workouts and was discussed online by many different sources. The base salary is $27,040 with a per-game active bonus of $1,685 and a weekly win bonus of $2,222. 
As a proud graduate of the University of Tennessee with a degree in computer science, Corey has been working in his career field comfortably while remaining in shape to pursue his future football endeavors. Corey has chosen to forego his XFL opportunity and continue working on his career field. We wish the Upstart League the best and would be open to the idea of playing when salaries reach the appropriate minimum. That came out and kind of took everybody by surprise. That was also put out a lot of, uh, you know, pro football talk and other places um, picked up the story. Some of the haters of the XFL picked it up and we were all kind of confused by it. And and we'll get into the interview here in a second. So with 46 uh, of the 52 roster spots placed spots open, will be active. Uh, so 46 guys will be active on game day. And so where does this $55,000 $55, come from? So if you're a player and you're on the active re- team and you're active and your team wins half the games, five, they'll bring your average to that. That's where they get that $55,000. Now, sources said that the XFL kind of gave the impression about tiers, and then all of a sudden, four days before the draft, dropped this. It says, well, everybody's getting paid $55,000. There's a lot of risks along with that, and we'll get into that. So that's where everything was at the point last week. So I reached out to Logan Brown, which is the agent for not only Corey Ravine, uh, but for other people, other players as well. And we sat down and talked about what was going on with this, his, his kind of take, because it's something that you read about, but it's one thing we, I wanted to hear, and I thought the fans should want to hear from the agent. So without that, let's talk, play our, our uh, interview with Logan Brown. Okay. All right, man. I, I like I said, I appreciate you having me on. Um, first and foremost, man. Uh, like I said, I, I just want to kind of clarify um, my view of the the XFL league in general. Um, and and obviously, everyone saw the statement that was released um, f- uh, about Corey Vereen earlier in the week. And for me, um, that statement was not as much to take a dig at the league. Um, for their low pay as it was to um, let everyone know what was going on with my client, uh, Corey. Uh, He was very excited about the opportunity to get another chance back in the XFL. Um, He he had played well for Memphis. He missed a couple of games with a knee injury, um, and that is ultimately why he did not sign with the Arizona Cardinals after the AAF. Um, was concerns over his knee. He had, he had had surgery on his uh, knee uh, when he was in New England, and uh, so um, it, it made it difficult for him to bounce back straight to the NFL. So he went to the AAF and, and had a great opportunity there, played well, um, and then was invited to, to veteran camp with the, with the Cardinals. But concerns of, over his knee is what ultimately kept him from getting signed. So Um, whenever he heard about the XFL coming back, uh, he was super excited about that. And, um, I guess his ultimate frustration was not with the 55,000 number, um, that was released four days before the draft. Um, and, and I think that that's kind of what's gotten, um, maybe misinterpreted a little bit from the statement, Mm -hmm. um, Corey went through the entire offseason um, under the impression that there was going to be a tiered salary structure with the XFL. And there was going to be multiple tiers. And um, Oliver Luck said that on a podcast back in November of 2018, um, a tiered salary structured. The XFL met with all agents at the NFL Combine in March. Um, again, nothing changed from that salary structure. And um, I mean, Forbes magazine reported uh, the bottom number of that tier of tier three would be in the 70 K range. Um, so in, in Corey's mind, he's thinking, OK, well, th- this is going to be another decent financial opportunity because the pay for his first year in the AAF was a base salary of 70 K across the board. So mm-hmm. his perception of this is, 
okay, that that's the bottom of where I'm going to be is where I am with the AAF. And, and that was something that he was excited about after the, having the success that he had. Um, and so then four days before the draft, um, the league sends out a memo and says, hey, the average salary is 55K. And so that was like a red flag that they dropped it on us four days before the draft. But then whenever you look at the 55K, um, the ba- it's basically a, a base salary. So there's not really a lot of injury protection. If you get hurt in camp, you're, you're viewed as an employee of the league. And so you're going to make um, a, a base salary of 27000 uh, between um, December the 4th and May 31st, which um, that's, that's not bad money for most people. Mm-hmm. Um, at, you, just even at the twenty-seven thousand mark, but um, the the real um, frustration that Corey had was the he felt as though he was misled about the pay. Even when he went to his XFL combine workouts over the summer, he worked out in Seattle, and they're still talking about a tiered salary structure um, at his XFL combine workout out in Seattle. And then four days before the draft, hey, there's no tiers. Everyone except the quarterbacks makes the same. And it's yeah. uh, 55K. Well, to get to 55K, you still have to be active every game, and your team has to win at least half of their games in the regular season. And and he's smart. He realizes that. I realize that. And uh, just in talking with them, it, it, it wasn't what he thought he was going to be getting from the XFL. Um, and, and in my statement, I, I made reference to the fact that he has a computer science degree from the University of Tennessee, uh, he's working as a software engineer, making well over uh, even that 55K without putting the um, stress and toll on his body uh, from a physical standpoint. So uh, we we talked about it. And and one thing about Corey, he's a man of, of faith. Um, mm-hmm. It's he, he prays. He talks with his family a lot. His, his dad's a minister. And um, one thing that I'll, I will tell you about Corey is when I, when I was recruiting him out of the University of Tennessee, I met with his dad. And in the initial meeting with his dad, his dad told me two things. He said, in this house, we love the Lord with all of our heart and we get college degrees and hang them on the wall. Gotcha. And that, that spoke volumes to me about who he was. And, and th- I want that to be the takeaway in this is that Corey set himself up to be able to turn down an opportunity that wasn't what he thought it was be would be or what he was told it was be what what he was told it would be um by simply taking the college aspect of his career serious and and getting a meaningful college degree and and that's something that a lot of guys will not be able to uh fall back on is having a good degree because uh you'll see a lot of guys will go through and it'll say undecided as their major or general studies but um, Corey was adamant that, that he knew what he wanted to do. And, um, so the frustration wasn't necessarily with the 55 K it was the disappointment over what he felt was being misled. And he said, you know, I don't really have to take this and, and I'm not going to. Gotcha. Now, did, after you got the notification four days before the draft, did the XFL or did, did agents kind of start talking amongst each other and reaching out to the league saying, Hey, like we met with you guys during the NFL combine. What's, what's the change with this tier structure? It, it wasn't really talked about too much. I, I know, um, I know several agents that, um, that really talked to their, their players that, that may have been considering the XFL, uh, prior to, um, are prior to that release and, and went over those numbers a couple of bigger agents and um they they said you know this is what it is and and the those players ultimately said no we're not going to do it but that was um that was probably right before the draft and and Corey wasn't ready to make that decision just yet like right before the draft because i mean when you you got to think about it when somebody's gone through this process and their dream is to ultimately get back to the NFL and they need the film, the XFL is a great opportunity for that. But for Corey, it took him a lot longer than the four days leading up to the draft to make that decision. And so he, like I said, he's very deliberate in his thought process. And so there, there's guys that have already told the XFL before Corey that they weren't going to play for that amount. 
Um, but Corey was the first one to go public and the first drafted player to do that. Gotcha. So is, does he, what is he going to do now as far as trying to get back into the NFL? Because it seems like that there is some intrinsic value, you should say, like you talked about with the game tape. So without having the game tape, does he still think that there is a, a, a path to the NFL? So, and, and that's a very good question. And, and I'll, I'll be the first person to sit on, sit here and tell you, I, so I have four clients that were drafted in the XFL draft. Um, two of them are playing for sure. One is, is still undecided. Um, and then Corey obviously has hung it up. Um, but uh, for Corey, he, with his, with his knee history, um, he knows that, that it's, even after putting up good film, it's going to be tough for him to get back to the NFL. And so that's what really made this decision, um, I guess, easier for him because he knows that, look, he uh, he was the second highest graded edge rusher in the entire AAF. He led his team in sacks and he had an opportunity to go to camp with someone, but the knee is what ultimately kept him from getting signed. So, I mean, really, could he have, could he put better film up and, and maybe get another look for, from someone? It's possible. But at the end of the day, knowing his specific situation, um, he would still obviously hope for an NFL team to call, but it's not as likely if he, as if he were to get this film. And because uh, obviously the NFL is a what have you done for me lately business and they want to see recent film. So um, this may be the end of, of the the chapter for his playing career and, and sticking into the professional world. And, and that's something that he's okay with because he's prepared. Um, he, he's prepared himself for that by, by doing so well in college and, and entering the professional world while he trains. Yeah. So when, when he was as part of the package, insurance covers it, but I mean, I guess guys like him, with the software engineering degree and got a full-time job, health insurance um, was a factor. It wasn't really a factor because he already has health insurance. Right. Some of the some of these other guys are you, are you representing? I mean, there's also value in having health insurance. Is do you know if the health insurance is just for the season? Does it cross over the whole year? Or I like. How did they explain that to agents? So we haven't seen any of that yet. Um, the only thing that has come from the XFL. Um, is the salary memo that they sent out four days before the draft. They've said that we'll have that, um, but it, it's a startup league. So a lot of this stuff is new, man. And, and you know, those, those guys were promised, and I say those guys as in Corey and, and players that came from the uh, AAF, they were promised the same thing with, with the AAF, and they never got it. I mean, I can tell you stories of clients getting bills at their house to this day from the – um, physical that they signed whenever they get reported to camp um, to start wor working for the AAF. They're getting billed for that because they were told they had insurance, but none of that other ca stuff came to fruition. So we haven't seen any of the specifics regarding the 401k, um, the insurance, any of that. We, as, as agents and, and talking to our players and advising them, that's nothing that we have been privy to at this point. Gotcha. And then you said, so for the experience for some of these guys, um, clients that you've had, and then um, other agents, what was their experience like in the AAF? I mean, you're talking about people still getting bills. I mean, I guess it's a two-part question. One, what was their experience like in the AAF? And then two, because of that experience in the AAF, has that made players less, more leery about what's going on in the XFL? Well, I'll tell you the... From my standpoint as an agent, the AAF uh, was great um, to work with from um, a league standpoint. It was something new that, that's obviously different from the NFL and the, the league was um, – everyone was on a standard contract, so all the contracts went through the league. Um, and, and they were very proactive in the startup phase, if you will. There was really good communication, um, at least from my standpoint – uh, from the AAF in terms of, hey, this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to be. And that that communication not only was consistent from the league office, but any team that you talk to. I, I had six, six or eight guys in the AAF. And um, just anybody that you dealt with from the AAF, 
Um, I had I had a great working relationship with all of those folks, and and fortunately, a lot of the AAF guys um, have transitioned over to the XFL after they abruptly sh- uh, shut down and, and stopped operations, and and a lot of the administrative staff is now working for the XFL, which is which is good, but to speak to that communication that that I saw with the AAF and and the the working relationship we had there. Um, just so to to make this clear, us agents aren't and players aren't the only ones that were surprised by that 55k number and how to get to that 55k. Hmm. Since Corey came out and and all of this happened, I've had conversations with individuals in the front office of four different teams in the XFL that had no idea the pay structure was going to go like that. Oh. They had no clue. Um, matter of fact, I. Uh, went on the uh, Brandon Merriweather radio show um, this week with Corey, and, and we were talking about the importance of guys getting meaningful college degrees and and so that you can put yourself into a position because no matter what happens with the XFL, it doesn't matter what happens with the NFL, Corey's going to still have bills just like anyone else, and, and he's in a position where he don't have to worry about that because he's set. Mm. And and not everybody has that. And I realized that. But after we got off of that radio show, I had an executive from one of the teams call me and he said, are you serious? This is how those guys are getting paid. It's this this base of of 27, but then it's active. And then the win bonus, because we were under the impression that that we actually I I won't tell you what what they said they were under the impression of in case. Mm -hmm. They were the only team under that impression, and I don't want to give away who it was that I talked to. But um, right. like I said, there's four teams that I've spoken to, um, either coaches, um, front office personnel. They had no idea that it was going like this, and, and they know that it's going to be um, be difficult, that there will be more guys to ultimately turn down this opportunity based on how this uh, pay structure is. Gotcha. Now, let's say – two years from now because i really think that the xfl is like focused on the first two years i mean because isn't that there was the contracts for two years or they were just one year and then like i don't even know if if that's all planned out yet as far as in in terms of the xfl yeah we we haven't even seen a player contract for the xfl gotcha so the the only thing that that we've seen at this point is um the, is the numbers we like i said we haven't seen any insurance we haven't seen any contracts all of that stuff is supposed to uh be done on december the 4th when those guys report um if it's anything like the aaf was and i'm hoping that it will be is they'll they'll give you a, a standard contract to review um well in advance um and, and so we'll know exactly kind of what to expect gotcha so I guess my last question is, based on your experience, you know, with the AAF and now with the XFL, I mean, what is your now take overall? Do you I mean, do you think the XFL will succeed or do you think that there could be problems on the horizon for the league? I mean, I'll tell you, I really, really want the XFL to succeed. Um, one thing I, I'll, I'll be the first to say that this is a great opportunity for a lot of guys. And, and I mean, you got guys that are playing arena ball for three, $300 a game and, and they're going to play for whatever. And, and that's really what, what this league is about is getting guys that are hungry for that opportunity to get to the next level. It's giving them that opportunity. And, and there's definitely a platform for, for this league. And, and from a business standpoint, if you, if, if the league handles things properly and, and, it could be that, that their way of mitigating their risk is to reduce the player salaries now that the comp- uh, the competition with the AAF is now out. Um, and so they, they say, hey, well, we, we could re- even lower our, our risk here by cutting player salaries so that we're sustainable for a longer period of time. And if, if that's what it is, I, I get it from a business standpoint. I really do because at the end of the day um, – that there's a need for a league like this. And um, one of my best friends is, is a, a coach in the NFL. And he told me as I was getting started out as an agent, he said, Logan, it's going to frustrate you because you're going to see people walking the streets 
that belong in the NFL and guys in the NFL that have no business being there. And he said it's all about opportunity and timing. And um, the XFL really gives those guys that need more film that opportunity and timing. And uh, so, like I said, there's there's a great need for a league like this. And and I would not be I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to the right person. Um, as a, as a player, uh, but there's just a, a, a couple of my guys that, that it doesn't really make a lot of sense for. And, and the league realizes that. So ultimately do I think that, um, that they'll, they'll last, the odds aren't really in their favor because no startup football league, um, has really been sustainable other than the NFL and the CFL. And mm-hmm. it's a lot to compete with, but if they do it the right way, um, I, I the, the potential is there. I will say that the potential is there. Do I, do I think that Antonio Brown's right in saying they'll be done in three weeks? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's pretty far off on that. If you ask me, yeah. um, I'll, I'll say I'm more confident in talking to my guys and saying that they'll last at least the first season, which the AAF didn't because the funding is there. So yeah. Do I know if it'll be a long-term thing? Absolutely not. I'm, I can't speak to that. Uh, but do I do I have confidence to tell a player that needs film and, and wants that opportunity and um, isn't in the same position that Corey's in? Would I would I be comfortable telling him, "Hey, go get your film in the XFL this year"? One hundred percent. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Well, hey, I appreciate you taking the time, uh, Logan, to to speak with us and kind of give your side of the story. I know a lot of fans. We're kind of confused about what's going on. And hopefully, I mean, in the end, just like you, we want the XFL to succeed too. So maybe this will move things in a different direction and get everybody on the same page. So we appreciate you taking the time. And uh, where can people find your agents? Yeah, we're at uh, loganbrownsports.com. And we're at um, on Twitter at LBS agent or on Instagram at LBS agent. All right. Perfect. All right. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. So there you have it. Our inter- exclusive interview with Logan Brown, agent for Corey Vereen. A couple takes away- takeaways that I got from this interview that definitely piqued my interest was one, and I didn't even really think about it too when it happened, about launching this, sending out this memo to the agents four days before the draft didn't put up red flags for me per se. I, I figured that that's what was talked about during the course of these guys doing business from this showcases and so forth. But when he said that the agents were talking about this tiered pay scale, that they were talking with the agents, even at the NFL combine about this tier pay scale. And then leading up to it was the tier pay, pay scale. I mean, nothing was set in stone. There's no question about it. To have it all of a sudden all come out four days before the draft seems a little bit surprised. And the fact that he, the really big point in, in, in this interview that he talks about is even the coaches were surprised and were kind of like, oh, that's, that's not a good idea. So the question is then, why the change? Why did this change all of a sudden? Let's just throw it out there for for theory, you know, throw out the theory here. Number one, let's go to the whole like Vince McMahon ruining things, WWE things. Did Vince McMahon say, you know, well, I'm the only game in town and I want you to lower the salaries. We should just pay everybody the same. Like there's no point. And since he's the one with the purse strings, Oliver Luck and others had to say, all right, Vince, you're, you're the man with the money. So we'll just do what Vince says because, you know, Vince might have a different approach or a different view of XFL players like he does with the wrestlers where it's like, well, I can just replace the next guy and I will run them 300 days out of the year. And then as soon as they get hurt or as soon as they're burnt out, I have somebody to replace them. Is that that mindset? Uh, that's pure speculation. I don't know. The second one maybe seems a little bit more likely and concerning, but not surprising is the money factor is, you know, a $30 million budget or so for player salaries for the year. Did they have to spend more money on coaches and spend more money than they thought on tier one guys? 
the tier one quarterbacks. So they had to make adjustments to the player salary. Now they're going to find players and players are going to play because like Logan said in the interview, I mean, game tape is worth value. And what I appreciate about him is that he hit on all the points that I was thinking about asking him. I mean, he hit on all of them, you know, uh, from that, you know, game tape has value and you know, what's going to happen. I mean, it is, I mean, it is a five month window where you're getting paid on average 55, but then you got to do something else during the year. And a guy like Corey Ravine, uh, like he has a job and now when you hear his perspective it makes sense that maybe you wouldn't take this risk if if the NFL is not probably going to be out there and the you're not making the kind of money that you are with a regular job you know with health insurance and not getting your body beat up i can understand his point of view too so it's a very tricky spot but I mean, you know, we've talked about the, you know, oh, well, we were waiting for the team names and, you know, that kind of stuff. And we, you know, put out an article to complain a little bit about it. But, I mean, it's part of the game, you know what I mean? We don't know the legal aspect of it. This one does not look good for the XFL and has me a little concerned about it. But we want to hear your take. Email us, podcast at xflnewshub.com or info at xflnewshub.com. You can call us 888-430-7692, to extension 3. We'd love to get your reaction to the Logan Brown interview. Or you can hit us up on the Twitter at xflnewshub.com. Or if you're here live watching us, we'll read some of your comments in the comment section a little bit later in the show. So... Let's get into some more news and another player that said some things this week that were kind of like, okay, one Antonio Brown. So Antonio Brown, we all know him. We all know the deal. Fans, for some reason, continue to ask the former NFL star wide receiver if he's going to play in the XFL. And Brown says already the XFL already came out and said, no, no. We do not have interest in him whatsoever. So, on Sunday, Brown responded to a fan's tweet about playing the XFL, saying, quote, I'll buy the XFL, tell Vince McMahon his league will only last three weeks. That's right. Antonio Brown says he's going to buy the XFL. And it's only going to last three weeks. Now, a couple days earlier, the fan again asked Antonio Brown about it. And he called the league Bush League. Called the league Bush League. Well, interesting that Mr. Brown's point of view. The 31-year-old wide receiver last, lasted only one game and and 13 days with the New England Patriots before being cut amid two different sexual misconduct allegations. But between his legal issues and reports of Brown not paying his vendors, for instance, Chef says Antonio Brown refuses to pay for catering for a Pro Bowl party. Antonio Brown sued by a trainer, alleges Raiders wide receiver never paid for services. Lawsuits, accusations pile up for ex Steeler. Antonio Brown. That this this article has got a lot of them, uh, including Antonio Brown farted in my face and didn't pay his bill. NFL stars doctors says so. In our opinion, and we put this on XFL News Hub. Brown should keep his money. It sounds like he needs it more than the XFL. That's right. Farted in the dudes. What? You can't make this stuff up. So here's the thing, and we've talked about this in the previous show. We are going to celebrate. Week nine of the XFL season as the AAF week, as we surpassed the AAF. And we made it nine weeks instead of eight. However, week four is AB week. Crazy AB week, where we celebrate the fact that we made it four weeks and Antonio Brown was once again wrong. So join us for week four, Antonio Brown week. And week nine, 
we look back at the AAF because the XFL lasted more than, I don't know, the eight weeks. So, in other news, this brings it back to what we've kind of talked about in the interview. Because there was some wonder about players that went undrafted. And also, I just want to point out to you, does this not bring a little potential credence to XFL News Hub's controversial post about Terrell Owens? So maybe Terrell Owens said, hey, I'll probably be a tier two guy. Maybe make 100000 maybe 75000 I don't know what it is. Gets wind of what they're actually paying and it's like, mm, no. And therefore drops out. And maybe there was a lot of names that were dropped out. Not because they weren't drafted, but because maybe the XFL, the players weren't interested. Now, having a 1,000 players publicized on the XFL draft poll, we got some names here that didn't get drafted. One was Trent Richardson, averaged a little over two. I didn't think he played that great in the AAF, to be honest with you. Robert Aguayo, famous high NFL draft pick and failed miserably in the NFL. He wasn't, he was neither, uh, he dropped out of the player pool or, or the coaches didn't get him. I would assume that maybe uh, this what brings, it's interesting. Nate Boyer, long snapper. Boyer was an accomplished U.S. Army Green Beret, played, you know, multiple wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, combat duties. David Cobb, running back. Was not in it. Played for both Tennessee Titans and the AAF. Fred Davis. He wasn't he at uh, one of the um, XFL summer showcases. Tight end. Play alongside Chris Cooley into his early retirement. He had some good years. He, Fred Davis was pretty good. Had some personal issues. He was out there. Noel Devine, a running back. Professional player. Played in a little bit uh, in the Canadian Football League. Jacoby Ford, wide receiver. Maybe I'm trying to think about make it. Jonas Gray, the running back from the New England Patriots. We all know him about the whole 200-yard game and showed some flashes of potential. Fabian Guerrera, an AAF and arena fan, football fan favorite. He went undrafted. Maybe he'll go back to the arena league. Maybe he wanted to get drafted. Clay Harbor was the guy that was the bachelorette TV reality star. Matt Hazel. Wide receiver, nine NFL seasons. Taylor Hearn, a guard, tackle. Played for Clemson. Trevor Knight, a quarterback. Had some history with Bob Stoops. Tanner Lee, another quarterback. Played for Nebraska. Jeff Locke, a punter, NFL punter. Robert Meacham played in the NFL. I remember him, and he might have even been on my fantasy football league. Zach Menenberger, remember he played with the AAF. Brandon Oliver was a running back. Vinny Papali, his, the son of Vincent Papali, he was at the XFL Summer Showcase Aaron uh, that we were at in D.C. Aaron Ripkowski, a fullback, he wasn't picked up. Oklahoma connection. Zach Stacy, another running back, ran for 1,000 yards with the Rams. Been interesting to have him back in St. Louis. Terrence Williams, a wide receiver, and Kendall Wright, wide receiver. So some of these guys may have not been drafted because of skill, but other guys might not have been drafted because they just dropped out of the XFL draft because four days before they heard the news about the pay and was like, hey, man, this is not worth it. All right, we'll be back with your social media stuff. And you, my, my friends that are on the chat room, we'll get to some of their stuff right after this. Stay tuned. All right, friends, we want to tell you about the XFL News Hub's iPhone and Android app. That's right. You can download XFL News Hub right to your phone. Get your XFL News Hub app on Google Play or iTunes. 
It's got all of our news out there. You can make comments. You can leave a review. It's got this podcast and so much more. And best of all, it's free. You get notifications anytime some breaking news happens. We will notify you. You'll get alerted right away on your phone. So head over to iTunes or Google Play to take a look at and download the XFL News Hub app. We're already over, I think, 10,000 downloads or something for some of these. So it's been uh, very successful. So head over there, download those apps now. I know you nerds, just do it, and you'll get those apps, and you get all the new XFL news right on your phone. So that's our little commercial break. All right, on to now. We were going to do question of the week, rank the Tier 1 quarterbacks, but that didn't really move the needle. I... uh, but let's, we'll save that for next week. Again, rank the XFL Tier 1 quarterbacks. We'll do that next week. But we're going to go to your social media stuff right now. And let's get into that. First up, let's go on to the Twitter. Should we just throw up the Twitter on here? I got so many Twitter messages. It's crazy. But we'll go through some of them now. Talking about 10-yard fight says, surprised they're not paying the veteran players more. This won't help attract NFL free agents waiting for another gig to suit up in the XFL. That's from 10-yard fight. I agree with that. Something K all of money, but it doesn't help the young players that like some that just graduated. But it does help the young players like some that just graduated college or some that's not ready or comfortable with the NFL yet. It's a tough one when it comes to what's going on with the players and the pay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Hassan the Battlehawk says, talking about Connor's XFL uh, article that he wrote recently. It's a great article. Are you going to continue writing for the XFL, i.e. I should be following you? I think it would be interesting if you let us know why they didn't get drafted. Talking about the article that we just read. Did Trent Richardson eat too much fast food again? I don't think so. Did Robert Aguayo get accused of yet another felony? Ouch. Now, Las Vegas Posse says, did y'all do any research before publishing this article, XFL News Hub? We were talking, we had an article about XFL versus NFL or CFL salaries. It takes five minutes to find out the uh, CFL average salary is 87 Canadian dollars. Base salary is uh, 54000 and going up next season. The problem with the CFL, uh, XFL comparison is that the CFL has like 16 or 18 games and the XFL only has 10. Chris Fitz says, I wonder what the average CFL salary is, is if you remove the QBs from the equation. Also, I wonder what the average salary is for national versus international. That's an interesting point there. Sergeant Klein, more like fifty-five to seventy-seven thousand a year. That for the lower tier players, and there are bonuses for winning games. And people need to understand many of these players are in it for the love of the game. Yes, I understand the love of the game. Trust me, as somebody who runs XFL News Hub, and there's plenty of guys that will write for the love of the game. But that only takes you so far. And that's why we are the only one that tries to take care of our riders versus everybody else who does not. Or maybe they do. I haven't heard that. XFL end zone. Lots of good players still available. Carter Schultz wasn't mentioned. Pash was a crazy stud. Why wasn't he drafted? I mean, I assume that he, uh, we assume that maybe he did. Did he turn it down? I don't know. Who knows? 2020 hindsight says Cardell is a is a guest. This was talking about the little controversy, and I didn't care. And actually, we're going to work on an article about this, about all the Tier 1 quarterbacks making the publicity round. And Cardell Jones was on Monday Night Raw. People had a problem with it. And I was like, who cares? That's good for the league. I don't care. Cardell is a great guest. Nothing wrong with a little cross-promotion. It's not Cardell is feuding with The Fiend. I hope to see XFL ads during WWE program. I see nothing wrong with it. Totally agree with you 100% there. The XFL chick, two very solid running backs from the Commanders get drafted as well. 
Mora Orange, 90 at XFL Battlehawks fan here. Keep on improving XFL. Let's show the NFL how a respectable sport is conducted. Go all XFL teams. All right. Um, that's about that. Oh, XFL end zone. Uh, yeah, Coach Riley got us plenty of commanders. Well, maybe you'll develop a small soft spot for the Dragons. Don't know what that's all about, but. There you have our social media stuff from the Twitters. On to Facebook. Talking about our Corey Vereen article about him not playing in the XFL. Paul Wright says, beat it. Jeff says it doesn't pay as good as NFL, and rightfully so, being it's a new league. So if he was good enough, he would be in the NFL. So take it what you can get or go work for a living. There you go. Leon Books, man, sign me up in his place, undrafted free agent, blah, blah, blah. Zeb says, bye, Felicia. Mm. That whole thing's a little played. About Antonio Brown, Vic says, yes, go broke buying league. That will fold. Ouch. The XFL is not going to fold that. The XFL is not going to fold. Relax. However, the, after this interview, uh, maybe we'll get your guys' take on the in the chat room. I'm, uh, I'm a little concerned there. A little concerned there, to be honest. But we'll, maybe we'll get to the bottom of this. That's what we do. Brian says, no way. Vince has experience that he learned from. Also, the AAF collapse. There is more of what not to do. True. James says, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere Vince has put enough away to run the league for three years without making much in return. But you know, Antonio is pretty smart and all. Ouch. Yeah, you would think that that's, but did, why was the pay different? Everybody think would have been fine with the tears deal? I don't know. Bruce Tannehill says, so Antonio Brown thinks he has more money than Vince McMahon? No, he doesn't. Dean says, LOL, will fold after three weeks. I guess we don't. he don't know who's funding the league, the WWE. Aaron, maybe if he's in the league. True. Anthony. All of a sudden, this clown darts and news feed reacts. Move on from the circus clown. There you have it. I, and it's funny because we were talking, so we have an exclusive, exclusive chat room group me for XFL News Hub writers. And this, I threw that out there. I was like, I don't know if I should report this Antonio Brown thing, but it was national news and he did call it out. And I was like, oh, this would be good for the podcast where I could be like, you know what? We'll have Antonio Brown week, week four of the XFL season. And we'll recap. What good old A.B. is doing with himself. All right. On to the comments on YouTube. Haas. Uh, let's see here. We'll show them to you guys. How about that? Haas. Three, four, so I just bought ticks to the Dragons versus Battlehawks in St. Louis. Nice. Super cool. I like it. $62. That's very cool. Happy to see that. Urban Meyer. Definitely not that Urban Meyer. Talking about our draft recap. Big 10 championship, not Big 12. Go Bucks. Must have said something wrong. What did all the cost the ticks? Mr. Zix says that. Uh, head over to XFL News Hub. And that Irish carrot says, advertise more, please. I don't want this to fail. Oh, neither do we. We don't want it to fail either. All right. What's going on in our chat room here? Any questions from our chat room? Talking about uh, Travis says Vince is personally funding it, so I think he's trying to save money and stuff. Talking about what's going on there. Travis, I think you're uh, – do you think it's Vince? Or do you think it's – there's a problem with the funds? I I'm confused, and I think we're going to reach out to the XFL. I'd love to get their take on this, too. Um, Miller says, is it possible if the XFL proves to be successful that it will expand? Fr fans are already talking about wanting it to expand. It's not going to be any AAF cities uh, about that. 
John asks any word about the uniforms. Zach responds, which is the correct answer. November, about the uniforms. We Stone Cold 10X, waiting for my Roughnecks gear. I ordered a shirt and hat. Good. I'm working on my gear as well. Getting that in. There you have it from our chat room. Appreciate those guys for showing up and hanging out with us there. Finally, we'll get to your emails. First up, Kristen says, let's see here. Hi, can you tell me how to apply the 25% discount to XFL shop purchases? Wondering that myself, got my season tickets, and I am waiting for that to come in so that I can get my stuff, as well as to send out our prize. James says we should watch React to the Week 9 TNF Thursday night football game on Discord or t- slash Team City. It would be fun to enjoy the game with someone who cares about the XXL. I think he means XFL. Because no one else in my family cares about it. James, we're work on getting more fan interaction, I guess. Uh, let's see. Blake says, will there be XFL fantasy football? Of course. We've talked about fantasy football XFL style. We will definitely have a league. And we will definitely, you can find leagues here. I definitely, we are definitely, we're working on some writing for actually fantasy xfl which will be a lot of fun i'm looking forward to it we're definitely gonna have a who's who league but i only think you can have i don't think you can have eight players eight guys that means everybody gets the quarterback from one team like how did that's the only way it would work and there's not a lot of running backs to go around i mean it's only eight teams folks so i'm not sure how fantasy football is going to work but we actually interviewed some people about that um, when we were at, we actually we asked Oliver Luck about it and absolutely there's no question that their interest they would definitely do XFL fantasy football I'm sure a lot of you guys is probably already quitting already for your regular fantasy football stuff Danny asks I suggest that you name it the extreme bowl talking about the big Super Bowl thing Darren Daryl sent this in and this was interesting stuff he said, first, I don't have any information from any source, but considered official. However, based on a screenshot, it appears Battlehawks have sold 70 to 80% of what's available in the lower bowl seats. He sent me an image from Ticketmaster. Uh, tickets, from what I'm hearing, are selling well, which goes to another issue. Now, uh, we reached out to the XFL for if they were going to give us any official kind of update um, what's going on with ticket sales. But I definitely foresee... Uh, in the next couple, a week or so, getting some kind of official word about ticket sales. Because the hard thing is, is like you go online and it's got all this stuff grayed out, but you don't know if those sections are closed or what the deal is with those. So uh, it's a good sign. I'll give you that. It's a good sign. Appreciate the email. Finally, our final call uh, emailer, our tier one, tier one emailer of course that would be nicholas checking in as always saying every time i watch la teams football games in the nfl i notice that they are struggling to generate a fan base both the chargers and rams are good teams in our playoff teams last year but the fan base and the la market has still not grew significantly to me this is a huge red flag for the xfl they will most likely have to move the la team not this year because the league is just getting started this year, but most likely by next year they will. I would suggest the two obvious choices, San Diego and Oakland. Out of the two, I would pick San Diego. They have a genuine interest in football because how the Chargers left and how much they really love football in San Diego. It's a good place to travel, to, which will make fans of other teams attend their games. I believe the XFL will will looking at San Diego, but because the AEF did not, did not go with them, also, the XFL needs to generate good press. I say that because of the players who leaked the salary and turned it down, the XFL, because of it, it makes it seem like the XFL is trying to get over on the players. I agree with that, which I hope is not the case. I also agree with that. I know it's a new league, so they are trying to manage expenses to get the league going, but they have to be careful because of their past. Haters are looking for any reason to tear down the league and condemn it. The XFL, for the most part, has been doing very good, very everything right. They need to keep it up. That way, so good players 
will want to play and continue to play for the league. And so fans will watch and continue to watch the XFL. Yeah, I mean, I would say, and I, we've been covering the XFL since January of 2018. So we are the number one, been doing this for a while. And this is probably the worst that I've seen so far, which is kind of like, that didn't come off very well. All right. So that's it for this week's show. So remember, if you want to be part of the show, you email podcast at xflnewshub.com or call 888-430-7692, extension 3. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, XFL News Hub. Remember, we got our apps on Google Play and iTunes. And leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate that. We'll read it on the show. You can listen to this show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and Stitcher for show notes xflnewshub.com slash xfl-podcast. And remember, we are live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. talking all things XFL. We appreciate Logan Brown for checking out. We'll have links to all of his stuff, their stuff, his agency, in the show notes. We are going to try working on other interviews as well for you guys. And we're just having a lot of fun. We got the supplemental draft. We'll got uniforms coming out. And we'll, maybe we'll get a little bit more clarification on what's going on with these salaries deal because that's me a little worried too. All right. Thanks for listening, y'all. Thanks for watching. Everybody on the, the chat room, we appreciate you guys. God bless y'all. Mahalo to all my homies, my friends in Hawaii. Miss you. That's it for me, folks, and I will see you all later. I got to turn the stream off.